You know that feeling when you walk into the formula aisle for the first time? Your baby's only a few weeks old and suddenly you're staring at a wall of cans and tubs. The labels say gentle, comfort, DHA+, goat's milk, and you're thinking, I just need food for my baby, not a vocabulary quiz. But here's the good news, it doesn't have to be this confusing. I'm Dr. Mona, a pediatrician, formula and pumping friendly lactation consultant, and mom of two who both received formula at some point in their life. And in this three-part series, we're breaking down everything you need to know about formula. And in this video, what's actually in it, how safe it is, and which marketing claims are just fluff. By the end, you're gonna know how to read a label without needing Google in the checkout line. So if you want clear science-backed baby info without the judgment, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the rest of the series. Let's get into it. Let's start with the most important thing. Formula in the US is safe and regulated. All formulas here meet the same FDA standards. Whether it's brand or generic, it's tested for the same nutrients, quality, and safety. The real difference usually comes down to preference and not health. And here's something worth saying out loud. There's already enough pressure between breast and formula feeding. And now we even see formula wars with parents comparing brand choices as if one makes you a better parent or a healthier kid. That's simply not true. All formulas on the market are nutritious. It's just about finding what works for your baby. Sometimes that means a tweak, but it doesn't mean your baby needs the most expensive or imported option. And as I go through this video, remember, none of this is sponsored by a formula company. This is strictly education. For my son, I chose Gerber Soothe because it had a whey base and probiotics that worked well for him. But that doesn't mean every baby needs it or that it's the best for every child. It was just the right fit for him. Generic formulas, they really are just as good. In fact, many are literally made in the same factories as brand name formulas. The only difference is the label and maybe the price tag. European formulas have a reputation for being better, but that's more perception than reality. While they can be a fine option, importing them yourself comes with risks like shipping delays, improper storage, counterfeit products, or missed recalls. Unless your clinician especially recommends one, What's on US shelves is safe, reliable, and backed by strict oversight. Breast milk is a living fluid. It changes from feed to feed and even adapts if you or your baby are sick. So no formula can copy that. But both breast milk and formula share some basics. Water makes up most of breast milk. It keeps babies hydrated. Formula, once mixed, does the same thing. Protein in breast milk is about 60% whey and 40% casein. Whey digests faster and is gentler on little tummies. Formula adjusts by adding whey or breaking proteins down to mimic that balance. Fats in breast milk change from feeding to feeding. They include DHA and ARA for brain and eye development. Formula adds DHA and ARA from plant oils to cover this need. Carbohydrates in breast milk are mostly lactose, but it also has HMO's special sugars for babies that feed healthy gut bacteria. Most formulas don't have natural HMOs, though some can add lab-made versions. Vitamins and minerals are in both. Breast milk is rich in many, but low in vitamin D and iron, so supplements are needed. Formula is fortified with iron, vitamin D, and more than 25 other vitamins and minerals. Here's the difference. Breast milk has live antibodies, white blood cells, enzymes, and beneficial bacteria that formula can't match. Formula, on the other hand, is consistent every feed, and it's already fortified with vitamin D and iron, so you don't need extra supplements. And let's bust a myth while we're here. Formula-fed babies are not automatically more prone to be overweight. Long-term weight outcomes depend far more on genetics and lifestyle than on how your baby was fed in the infancy period. If busting that myth made you feel a little lighter, hit subscribe so I can keep walking you through the rest of this series. So while we can't copy breast milk exactly, here's how we get as close as possible with what's on the shelf. All infant formula in the U.S. are built from the same six essentials, protein, fat, carbohydrate, vitamins, and minerals, and added other nutrients like probiotics or nucleotides. Every one of these is regulated for safety and required to support growth. Most formulas start with cow's milk protein that's been modified to make it easier for babies to digest. Soy formula is safe and well-studied, but it's usually only used for specific situations like a true lactose allergy or galactosemia. Goat's milk is trendy, but there's no solid evidence it's better. It's more marketing than science. Breast milk naturally contains two proteins, whey and casein. Casein curdles in an acidic environment, while whey stays liquid. 
think casein curdles in their belly, whey is watery. That's why some spit up looks more chunky than watery. Breast milk is usually about 60% whey and 40% casein, though this changes throughout the day. Standard cow's milk protein formula is about 80% casein and 20% whey. To mimic breast milk, many formulas add more whey. Some are 100% whey-based, while others stick closer to the natural breast milk balance of 80-20. This ratio can make a big difference in digestion. Higher whey formulas empty from the stomach faster, which may help with reflux. On the flip side, if your baby has frequent loose stools on a high whey formula, switching to one with more casein may help slow things down. So how do you figure out a formula's whey to casein ratio? Stay tuned, I'll show you how to read a label so you can decode these differences yourself. Formula fats usually come from a mix of oils like palm, soy, coconut, and sunflower. These aren't random fillers. Each one play a role in building a fat profile that looks more like breast milk. Seed oils like soy and sunflower are especially important because they're rich in essential fatty acids, linoleic acid, omega-6, and alpha linoleic acid, omega-3. Babies can't make these on their own, and they're the building blocks for brain growth, vision, and healthy cells. Breast milk always contains them, so formulas need a reliable way to provide them too. Seed oils are the best option because they naturally have these fatty acids in the right amount and can be consistently purified and regulated. Other fats like dairy fat or coconut oil don't provide enough of these critical omega fats on their own. Many formulas also add DHA and ARA, long chain omega fats found in breast milk that further support brain and eye development. Palm or coconut oils often round things out, providing saturated fats that help mimic the balance of fat types in breast milk. The exact blend varies by brand, but here's the key. Babies can handle a wide range of fat combinations. Breast milk itself changes in fat content from feed to feed and even throughout the day. Because of this natural variation, subtle differences in formula fat blends usually don't make a big difference. And despite what you hear online, there's no evidence that seed oils and formula cause harm. They're included because they're the safest and most effective way to deliver these essential fats every baby needs. When comparing formulas, I usually suggest focusing on the protein and carbohydrate sources first. Fat blends matter less unless your baby has specific digestion issues or for your preference. Most formulas use lactose as the main carbohydrate, just like breast milk. If a formula is labeled lactose-free, it will use safe alternatives like corn syrup solids, maltodextrin, or sometimes sucrose, which is table sugar. Here's a key point. Corn syrup solids in formula are not the same as high fructose corn syrup. They're simple, broken down carbs, basically baby fuel made for tiny tummies to handle. Think of them like the rice or bread of the carb world, just in a baby friendly form. So why would a formula add something besides lactose? Some babies don't tolerate full lactose loads well, and using an alternative carb can make digestion easier. These alternatives are safe and studies show babies grow well on them. A common myth is that babies are lactose intolerant if they're gassy. In reality, true lactose intolerance in infants is extremely rare because babies are born with the enzyme to digest lactose. It usually shows up later in life and not in infancy. And remember, lactose intolerance is very different from a cow's milk protein allergy. Lactose intolerance is about breaking down the carb lactose, while milk protein allergy is an immune reaction to the protein in cow's milk. Babies with a protein allergy may need formulas where the protein is broken down, and we'll cover that in part two. Carbs, protein, and fat make up about 98% of formula. The remaining 2% is vitamins and minerals. Because the FDA requires all formulas to meet strict standards, there isn't much difference in the vitamins and minerals between formulas. By law, every infant formula must contain more than 25 essential vitamins and minerals, including iron, vitamin D, calcium, zinc, and B vitamins. Almost all US formulas are fortified with iron to prevent anemia. And the FDA also sets minimum and maximum levels of each nutrient, so no matter what brand or price, your baby's covered. Breast milk, on the other hand, doesn't naturally contain enough vitamin D or iron, which is why supplementation may routinely be recommended. Some formulas include extras for gut or immune support. You might see prebiotics, which are food for healthy gut bacteria, probiotics, which are the bacteria themselves, nucleotides, which support metabolism and immunity, proteins like lactoferrin or lysozyme, also found in breast milk, which may help with immune health. Prebiotics and probiotics get the most attention. Research is ongoing and not every strain is equally useful. There's some evidence that certain probiotics may help with colic or gas in formula, but they're not necessary for every baby. 
If you want a deeper dive into which probiotics are being studied and what the evidence shows, check out my separate video on probiotics in infants. With all this in mind, it's important to remember that homemade formula is strongly discouraged. It can miss key nutrients and put babies at serious risk for infection and malnutrition. Formula, formulation, is a highly regulated process and getting it right is essential to proper growth and nutrition. If learning the why behind these ingredients is helping you feel more confident, subscribe so you'll be ready for part two where we're gonna cover how to choose the best formula for your baby, looking at digestion issues, reflux, allergies, and what makes sense for your family and your budget. To figure out a formula's main protein and carb source, flip the can around and check the ingredient list. Ingredients are listed in descending order by weight, measured before processing. The first few ingredients give the best clues about the main protein and carb sources. If you see non-fat milk or skim milk first, followed by whey protein, that's a cow's milk formula with added whey to be more like breast milk. If you see whey protein hydrolysate, or partially hydrolyzed whey, that means the proteins are broken down for easier digestion. And if you see soy protein isolate, that means it's soy-based. Lactose is often naturally present in milk ingredients, so it may not be listed separately. But if you see maltodextrin, corn syrup solids, or sucrose near the top, those are the main carb sources. In video two of this series, we're gonna break down various types of formula categories, standard formula, partially hydrolyzed, hydrolyzed, et cetera, and when they're used, so stay tuned for that. Most formulas use a blend of oils, palm, soy, coconut, and sunflower. Many also add DHA and ARA for brain and eye development. Now let's look at two labels side by side. Here's how this plays out with two common formulas, Enfamil NeuroPro Gentilis and Gerber Good Start Soothe Pro. And remember this video is not sponsored by any formula company. This is strictly for education. Let's start with Enfamil NeuroPro Gentilis. When you flip the can around and look here, the first few ingredients are corn syrup solids, partially hydrolyzed nonfat milk and whey protein concentrate, vegetable oil. So what does that mean? First, the major carbohydrate here is corn syrup solids, not lactose. Corn syrup solids are a safe alternative carb source, often used for ease of digestion and in gentle formulas. Next, the proteins are partially hydrolyzed, which means they've been broken down to make them easier for babies to digest and potentially less likely to cause fussiness or gas. The protein sources are non-fat milk and whey protein concentrate. Together, these mimic the protein balance of breast milk with a focus on making digestion easier. For fats, you'll see blends of oils, usually a mix, but the label will specify which. In Gentilis, the blend may include palm, soy, coconut, and sunflower oil for a balance of fatty acids, plus DHA and ARA to support brain and eye development. Now let's look at Gerber Good Start Soothe Pro. Flip the can around, look in the ingredients. Its first ingredients are corn maltodextrin, partially hydrolyzed whey protein concentrate, vegetable oils. In this case, corn maltodextrin is the main carbohydrate instead of lactose. Again, it's used to make the formula easier for sensitive tummies to tolerate. The protein is 100% whey and it's partially hydrolyzed, meaning it's already broken down, which can help soothe colicky or gassy babies. For fats, there's another blend of oils, plus DHA and ARA. Soothe Pro also includes a probiotic L-ruteri, intended for digestive discomfort. When decoding labels, check the first few ingredients to understand the main carbohydrate and protein sources. If you see partially hydrolyzed, the protein is broken down for gentler digestion. If lactose isn't listed, look for maltodextrin or corn syrup solids as the primary carb. Oil blends and added nutrients like DHA, ARA, or probiotics show up a bit later in the list. Remember, choosing between formulas with different carb or protein sources is usually about what works best for your baby's digestion and comfort. All of these formulas are regulated, safe options designed to meet your baby's nutritional needs. The differences are adjustments meant to address common feeding concerns like gas, fussiness, or sensitivity. And here are other buzzwords to know. Terms like gentle, sensitive, or comfort aren't regulated. They usually mean less lactose or partially broken down protein, but it depends on the brand. Newborn versus infant is mostly marketing. Standard infant formulas can be used from birth to 12 months unless your pediatrician tells you otherwise. So always just go for the infant formulas. And organic, that's about how the ingredients are farmed. It doesn't make the formula more nutritious. This is personal preference. Bottom line, formula fed babies thrive. Every option on US or EU shelves meet safety standards. What matters most is that your baby is fed, growing and loved. 
Part two of this series is all about how to choose the best formula for your baby. Whether you're dealing with digestion issues, reflux, allergies, or just wondering which one makes the most sense for you and your family's budget. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you're the first to see it. And remember, you don't have to figure out every detail of parenting alone. I'm here to help walk you through each step so you can make feeding choices with confidence and peace of mind. I'll see you all next time. Stay well.